Hey, what's up? Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2023 MCU film, Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. This is two hours and seven minutes long. It is the third film in our Ant-Man franchise. Uh, we've seen Ant-Man in Captain America Civil War, the Avengers films. Uh, he's a big character. He's, he's the reason why the Avengers got to come back in regards to post-blip. Um, because he left the quantum realm because a rat happened to press a button while, you know, the van being in the in the uh, storage unit for all those times. So, this film is a good intro of the Kang character as we got into Loki Season 1. So, this is another introduction of the Kang character, another introduction into the uh, Kang Dynasty, right? Different Kangs from different, ga from different multiverses, right? So, it's a good explanation in regards to that. It's just... Far too much CGI. Um, it, it just felt so visual. There wasn't anything tactile. Like there were so many scenes where you could tell that they were standing on platforms and everything else was just thrown in computer-wise. It felt too artificial and there was no proper flow to it in regards to transition from practicality to visual aid. It was it was strange. A lot of it felt like we were watching Star Wars films, to be honest. I felt like we were in Coruscant for a lot of the, of the film. There was a lot of alien characters walking around through backgrounds, different restaurant scenes, different spaceships flying around, different balcony scenes, seeing the city below. It was very Coruscant. And it wasn't Coruscant. It was this empire capital city that Kang built within the quantum realm. But how did all of these people wind up in... The quantum realm. Why are there hundreds of thousands of different species of people, um, bipedal, standing on two legs, arms, fully conscious, able to speak from different tribes, different cities? How did everybody get there? Where are they all from? Are they just a collective group from different various multiverses? Is the quantum realm the melting pot of various multiverses? There was no explanation to it, and I don't understand why. It's always been explained the quantum realm is just the universe within our universe, the world under our world. When you shrink through the atoms and stuff like that, we didn't really get a lot of ant stuff till the end of the film, the ants saved the day. But like, it was just strange having all these additional backstories of, of the Janet Van Damme character in regards to being with Kang for 30 years in the quantum realm before they, she you know was taken back to the real world. Um, a lot of it was just there and it was just not explained it was just too much cgi it was not enough actual story it was it was strange it was strange it's unfortunate that it was the third film within a franchise the sixth seventh film we've had the ant-man character and and uh paul does a great job with the, with the character but it's just it was strange i don't i don't know i don't know how else to explain it it was cheesy at points it's unfortunate but hey we watched it it's the 80 billionth thing that we've gotten from marvel it's a part of the canon it's another addition the point of this was to introduce the kang character further and we got that the second post credit scene was a preview aspect of loki season two can't wait for that um things i don't know man and that's what i keep hearing a lot my, my brother said that as well when he first saw the film and it's Unfortunate. Can't win them all. On to the next review. <laughs> Mahalo.